touch safe touch cuz like i remember you telling me like even how you touch your daughter what are you feeling when you touch your daughter if you're angry and you just like children are very sensitive to touch so if you could just say in your words since a lot of your work is around touch touch is also about presence you know about uh, when we bring the energy from the mind to the heart because touch is connected to the heart like through the heart through the arms through our hands when we are here you know that touch even if i touch somebody that touch is meaningless so it's again connected with breath you breathe into your heart you know like just feel your heart first and then allow that love flow through your hands to another being it's pure love we have connoted you know the touch with uh, sexual touch or you know touch has but touch is very pure as babies they have done research babies yeah. who were not touched not held absolutely like they yeah. how many autoimmune diseases they develop and babies who were cuddled who were touched by the mother who were held how healthy their immune system develops so a lot of everyone like learns that shame and sexuality the connection becomes strong in our childhood because um, we don't know i think we all struggle with how do we introduce sexuality to children um, and it's such a gray area that whole thing that like you know even with my daughter like if it, if she's even touching anywhere on everyone gets weird you know like they're like no no you know so it, it it's something that as a society we're very uncomfortable with so what i feel is that uh, when we are touching our face our fingers it is okay but as a little child the child is exploring the body that the child is in you know it's a new new phenomenon for the child also like <laughs> children will suck their their toes also they will suck their fingers whatever we don't stop them but when the child is exploring different parts and when it goes to a particular part we just become frozen so i feel that we have to open up our mind and allow the child to feel feel the body and then we can bring it when the child is becoming 4 or 5 years old already they know you know they start knowing that my body is different from a boy's body and that's the time we can slowly introduce it without any guilt or shame you know we can just say it that publicly you know because this is our private part and it's our sacred part you know like like that to bring it with more awareness and more love not as a oh shame shame this is shame shame no and just like you said earlier um it's to do a lot with our shame oh, and how we grew up like in the vagina monologues yeah. you know they would have the whole audiences yeah. shout the word vagina yeah. out yeah Uh, just for us to get used to naming a part yeah. of our body because yeah. we're so shameful that we can't even say the word um yeah. and uh, yeah this uh, this shame and secrecy you know works against us in so many ways otherwise why would a child who's been touched in a way that he or she doesn't like what prevents them from coming and telling, telling the parents us, yeah. so this shame is becomes very dangerous yes so we really need to uh yeah be Addressing open that. like just like you said be open to the whole body you, you know, know like the from where the origin happens the creation yeah. happens through the yoni right yeah. like mother it, mother gives birth to the child yeah so in our sacred uh, scriptures like it's not condemned yeah the shame i don't know came how it it started coming and all that and then we started kind of got gripped into that whole yeah. thing Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, you know recently yeah. I watched a forum theater production where they had uh, uh it was about this um, young boy and girl who had become friends and the girl had sent uh, some pictures of her naked body to the boy and then the boy wanted her to come home when there was nobody else at home and she didn't want to do that. So he said if you don't come I will um, I will uh, put these pictures yeah. on Facebook. and uh, you know at the end we there was a little discussion and um, somebody said that you know it's a human body yeah. and we all have the same yeah. body yes why should there be so much shame around yeah. it and that shame is what gives that boy that power yes, wow. yes. yes. and also so there were so many things in that for this young girl to not have the safety to take it to her parents even at that stage yes. because she's already made a mistake so you know so this so it children you know when they don't have safety with parents i feel they're very very vulnerable how do we support parents to 
uh, teach children what is safe touch, that they can approach them, you know, with like how do we create safety for them? Yeah. Like we said earlier, like you said earlier, Simal, it's by creating safety for the parents. It's by supporting parents. You know, okay. with information, with kindness, with guidance, with compassion. Because parents don't intend to make these mistakes that have these kinds of consequences. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like you're very familiar with Mrida, for parents to heal their pain, I think for parents, just like you said earlier, uh, to do their own inner work. Because that's when we stop the intergenerational yes. trauma, right? We, we can stop it and put a full stop. I'd like to add one practical thing. You know, when children are small, like three-year-old girl, four-year-old boy, you know? So be comfortable when they're taking bath, take bath with them. You know, like uh, give them that, uh, that freedom that they can see you having bath and they can have bath with you. That will make them more comfortable in their body. You know, we have to first be comfortable in our body and then make them comfortable with their body. So it yeah. again, and then the discernment will come, you know, because children are very, very intuitive. They will know what, they, once you train them a little bit, they know what is loving touch, what is wrong touch. They, they know it. They have that sense. But we kind of, you know, with our own conditioning and our own things, we cover up their sense. So yeah. make them free at home, you know, let them relax. Let them, let them be, naked, let them be and naked and run around in the house, yeah. you know, when they're young, like till four or five. And then slowly, slowly, automatically, the, you know, the girls will start feeling or the boys will start feeling that, okay, this is our sacred part and we need to wear an underwear. But give, you know, take showers with them, take baths with them, make, let them be comfortable in their body. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. In, yeah. it, just if I think about myself, that might be difficult for me to do. Um, and, and that's, I feel like it's okay, but just to know that, you know, it's something that I have if I'm, if I don't have that openness, um, then that's my thing. Uh, but, but here there's the strong culture is that to, you know, to shower together with your child is, is so wrong. So I don't have that. Mm -hmm. You know, if a parent can do it, great. And if a parent finds it difficult, and, you know, the child in that home might have a huge curiosity about the human body of or about, about my own body or about the body of the opposite sex, even to, you know, look at it in a book and to say that, uh, you know, your body is like yeah. this, your brother's body is like this, and, and to be open about mm -hmm. that. Um, I remember as a child being curious, being so curious about the, as, as a very small child. And only now, you know, I feel that I wish somebody had just simply told me about it or even yes. just showed me in a book. You know, mind always wants to open that door which is closed. Yeah. yeah. So like if we are comfortable with our children when they're growing up, I'm talk yeah. not talking about when they're little, but then yeah. they're growing up. Yeah. You know, when they feel that comfort with their body, and they can see their parents are comfortable with their body. It's a different, like how you see with your daughter now. Mm -hmm. You are bringing her up in with awareness. You have allowed her to 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 run naked in the house, you know. Mm -hmm. So you see how she is, and you can see that that how she is flowering, you know, in her naturalness. That she knows what is touch. She knows when she doesn't like some, you know, don't touch me. Like she will say that I don't like it. So she's very. Uh, like she will voice her her feelings very naturally. And actually that also brings me to the point of confidence in children, self-worth and confidence because, um, you know, in the topic of abuse, I also went through some abuse and I was a very timid child. So I and, and what my research showed is that the children who are, who are timid, who are submissive, who can't speak up are more vulnerable because Somehow you you kind of mentioned it. The predator knows like who he can target, who who will if even if you if the child is able to shout or scream or like you know say something, then they they get scared because they will target the ones who will keep quiet and you know yeah yeah. 
So how do we build that inner confidence in children, like, you know, that, that ability to speak up? Like you said, you know, like uh, Mrida, you so clearly said, validating feelings is a big part of building confidence. Uh, you know, just simply instead of saying um, to a child, oh, you can't be hungry now. You just had a banana five minutes ago. Or no, that's, that's nothing. You'll be fine saying you're hurting or you're hungry okay you know what can we do about that validate and uh, the the model of therapy that i follow is called the oaklander model where uh, violet oaklander defines the self as the body the breath the voice uh, the senses our emotions our mind our sense of humor our creativity uh, our autonomy um, so when we keep all of these things kind of uh, stimulated, not overstimulated or understimulated, but kind of let the child lead us also, you know, in whatever we do, I think we need to be mindful of the impact it's having on the child yes. and to let that guide us. So in that sense, just as much as we are the guides of the children and we are the teachers, of the children to let the children teach us what yes. they what is good for them yes. so to kind of really be checking in with them and to have them be a really really important part of the family equation like they matter their opinions matter yes. Yes. their feelings and their thoughts really yeah. matter uh, and, and to have to kind of have uh, um for the parents to have a consciousness of how can i kind of keep the child's mind and body engaged. Like, for example, I'm not saying do it every day, but, you know, every once in a while you say, okay, that lunch is ready, but I'm going to close your eyes. I'm going to take you to the table and I want you to smell yes. the food and guess what I've made for lunch. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, a, like in simple game kind of ways. And then you say, uh, you open your eyes and you say, okay, how many colors can you see? today just on the table before you eat and then you know you say maybe uh, like Violet Oaklander in her book describes this exercise with an orange where you take an orange and you first look at it as if you've never seen an orange before in your life and maybe you'll never again see an orange in your life so you see it and you feel it and you feel the weight of it and you smell it and see does it make any sound and then you pierce it with your nail and smell again and you peel very slowly. How does the orange part feel? How does the mm. white part feel? And finally, like that, slowly, 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 you get, yeah. you take one segment out and you place it in your mouth. Don't bite in immediately. Feel it around your mouth. Then you put your teeth, so really stretch out and experience every once in a while, you know? Yeah. So then you're engaging that whole body. Yeah. You know, you say that, okay, let's, uh, let's have a race to see how who gets from this end of the room to that end of the room. We're only walking, no running. Let's see who can walk the fastest. Then you see the next time around, who can walk the slowest? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you're kind of uh, uh, have, um, have a line of bricks or something and, you know, have them balance. It just, it, it's, Endless and nowadays, if you just Google, say, balancing games for children mm. on the net, you will get a plethora of ideas. Uh, so when we keep all of those mm. things kind of in a way lightly polished, uh, children have a much better, uh, and Oaklander calls it the sense of self, that the mm. sense of self really gets stronger. And makes them better human beings, more aware to enjoy their life because we give out what we have inside. If I have only pain inside, that's what I'm going to give to the world, to yes. everybody around yeah. me. Only when I have little happiness, contentment, that's what I'm going to share. So it starts with the self, like how she said. And it needs little time and patience, you know, with children to bring, bring in all these creative things. Because giving birth is easy, like how Osho says, giving birth is so easy. But to be, to be shaping a, an individual, their forward life journey is... is being a real parent. That's being a real parent, you know, that mindfulness to bring that awareness first in your life, first in yourself.